Merhabalar ben Şükrü. P2P'nin bu bölümünde Nathan ile birlikte olacağız. Nathan btcmap.org üzerine çalışıyor. btcmap.org ile aslında haritada bitcoin ile ödeme alan yerleri işaretleyebiliyorsunuz. Bir yere gittiğinizde kolaylıkla bitcoin ile ödeme alan yerleri bulabiliyorsunuz. Umarım bu bölüm hoşunuza gidecektir. Hi Nathan. Hi Sukru, how's it going? It's good, how are you? All good. So, uh, I remember contact, contacting you like in 2021 or the initial uh, contact that I had with you was over your uh, Bitcoin track. Uh, yeah, it was the, the overlanding rig uh, initially, yeah. I think. Um, and then I think we were talking about Gamertron and, and yeah. the Statman game and, and stuff like that, yeah. As yeah, well. so should we maybe start uh, talking about the track, Gamertron, Satman, and then move to BTC map? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's great. It will also provide some background on you and what you are interested in. Yeah, all right. Uh, well, my... Um, I went traveling with my family about, we set off at the tail end, no, about June 2019. Um, and at that point, I was I was a pre-coiner. So this is before um, falling down the Bitcoin rabbit hole. So um, we traveled uh, for almost three years uh, around the world in a large um, overland vehicle. So it's kind of like a motorhome, but on steroids, really. Yeah. Because... Uh, We were being full time uh, in that rig, um, and we were pretty much self sufficient. So you could have lots of uh, water, lots of battery power, solar, uh, redundant um, sort of fuel supplies for diesel and gas and things like that. So it means we can pretty much uh, not be relying upon upon anyone really. So yeah, we went. This was all awesome before Corona, I guess. Uh, yeah, so pre Corona we set off. Yeah, when a few people understood the importance of self-sufficiency and all that stuff. Yeah, and since COVID, there's been a huge uh, demand for motorhomes and caravans and all this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, we were on the road at the time. So we, uh, I think we'd already completed Scandinavia. We'd um, down to Morocco, um, and we'd shipped the uh, the truck out to uh, South America. <clears throat> so we went into Montevideo in Uruguay, um, and and yeah, we'd gone down through Argentina and gone through the whole Patagonian loop, which was immense. Um, and we weren't we, we weren't in the news bubble at all, so we weren't tracking COVID or anything else. And and then literally overnight, um, everything went into to lockdown when we were in Chile. Um, so we spent four months in a field in Chile waiting for uh, uh, the authority to move, effectively. So, you, yeah, you, you didn't know what to do, basically, huh, initially? No, but we were very lucky. So we just that day arrived at a small kind of eco farm that was run by this American family. Uh, she was Argentinian uh, originally, but um, had grown up in the U.S. But, yeah, we... Landed on this place, and there was another family there from um, uh, sort of the Balkan areas, uh, and and yeah, we spent the next four months just with those two other families. But we were on private land; uh, we were able to get deliveries in of kind of raw goods that we could get flour and milk and eggs and stuff. Um, and then we were just pretty much left alone. So, in terms of the pandemic, we had quite a good lockdown because you know the kids didn't know what was going on really they were just running around being kids yeah you know, compared were... to f- being locked down in an apartment in a city it's exactly much, yeah, preferable yeah. yeah yeah so yeah we we got fairly lucky with that um and then um yeah managed to get the truck shipped back to europe and uh in fact the british government put on a flight for uh british nationals uh, in south america Uh, managed to get back to Europe, um, and then uh, we spent a very short amount of time in the UK, and then we we got back on the road again, um, and then we sort of headed to the Balkan area, and then we spent three months in Turkey. So yeah. 
probably our favorite country uh, of the whole trip, and then we went to 27 countries, was, was Turkey. Really? Um, that uh, makes me really happy to hear. <laughs> yeah, it's an amazing place. Uh, yeah. And the people are just, you know, generally friendly and welcoming. You know, we park up. A uh, car park in the middle of nowhere, you know, uh, not a notorious place. And, and we'd li literally get dragged over to a family's uh, picnic area and they would yeah. share everything they had with us and pour us tea and stuff. And, you know, we didn't have a choice in the matter, really. We just had to, you know, go and uh, yeah. hang out with the locals. It was, it was great. Uh, Did you by any chance, like, make it to a Turkish wedding or something, you know, because some people... No, unfortunately yeah. not, yeah. We got so many invites to people's houses and things, yeah. but no, didn't get to a wedding, unfortunately. No, but I it mean, was a great time. I loved it. We say Turkish people are very hospitable. Uh, I mean, I'm. I think it was even way more back in the days, but like since, but still, uh, that tradition holds, and it's really good to hear that it's there. That you know, we are hospitable. We invite people and want to meet them and. Yeah, and I think it gets more so the the more off the the tourist trail you get, or more out the the main cities. Um, you know, we we got all the way out to was it Mardin in the east? Mardin, yeah. Um, and you know, just very different than than Izmir, for example. They're they're totally yeah. different places, different countries, really. You know. Yeah, it's a different world, basically. <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I I really had the question to ask you which one your favorite country was, and yeah, you already answered it. So yeah, I mean we've been looking at schools in in Izmir actually um, yeah. online, just you know nothing firm, but we're looking at different options in different countries to to see where we we want to base ourselves for the next decade uh, or so. We could talk about it after this in <laughs> more detail. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you travel together with your family, and I know your son is also building on Bitcoin. This is true, yeah. He gets yeah. a little bit of help, but he's creating the, the games himself. So uh, that was my first. Uh, after so we got home, um, and this was in 22 August. Um, and then uh, for the first time in a while, I had some you know free time because life on the road is busy. You, you have pretty much no free time you've got to be figuring out loads of stuff and we were we were homeschooling the kids as well so there was there was little time for anything else mm -hmm. uh, and it was with that time that I had when we got home that I discovered Bitcoin um, partly through the homeschool kind of um, freedom loving environment so Maybe uh, Daniel had an impact on that. Mr. Prince helps for sure. Yeah. Uh, and then because our kids uh, are, were in the same online school, so Dan and I were talking. Um, and, you know, we obviously we got into Bitcoin and I'd looked at it in the past like everyone else uh, and ignored it for uh, the wrong reasons. Uh, but I, I dug in and I did the work. And obviously, you know, once you've done the work and you understand it, then. It's a one-way street. So, uh, so yeah, I, I mean, immediately just obsessed with it um, and, and looking for opportunities to do something in the area. And the first thing we did was with my son, Sam, and we, we created the Gamertron uh, business. Um, and he was creating games on his online school because uh, they were uh, teaching them how to code um, using Unity 3D, which is kind of... A, professional game development environment. Uh -huh. uh, and then, yeah, we came across the, the idea of Satsman, which is a, a take on Pac-Man, but we've got uh, shit coins running around after you. Yeah. The ghosts are the shit coins. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so that was, I've got a technical background, not, not a coder, but worked in tech businesses. Um, and yeah, me and Sam managed to uh, hook together some some lightning payments and a, a leaderboard so we that was fun you know when he was receiving his first sats um from the business and yeah people were playing the game it was it was really good for him to see it you know he's only 10 years old at that point so. hmm. i was going to ask <clears throat> yeah he started the gametron at 10 years old age yeah yeah it's, on, on, it's the best on to earn bitcoin <laughs> it's like you can buy it you can get donations but earning is the best way 
Yeah, for right. sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, that was that sort of scratched an itch in terms of wanting to do something. Um, and and then yeah, the real sort of interest came um, with BTC Map um, when I was headed out to Baltic Honey Badger in Riga, uh, which was end of August of of last year, twenty two. Okay. Um, and I was looking for places to spend set. So at that point, I'd already, um, you know, played with some merchant solutions. Uh, we had the coin, uh, the bolt card from Coin Corner launched, and we were able to use that locally here in Manchester in the UK. A couple of merchants. Um, mm, have, the Satoshi's have, place um, is also in Manchester, right? It is. Yeah, Satoshi's place is up in. I, I really want to visit that place. Like you have I, to come. Yeah. <laughs> Do you go there once in a while or? Yeah, um, not as often as I'd like. Um, but yeah, I've been up there two or three times. Um, and we're going to run, a, well, I'm going to run a, a Bitcoin for Kids uh, workshop for the local homeschool community, uh, which is something I did, again, when I was trying to find how can I contribute um, setting this Bitcoin for Kids course up was something I did actually prior to the Gamertron stuff with Sam. And we ran uh, a few courses in Bansko in Bulgaria uh, for the the world school community there, and, and some of the local kids as well. Um, so, by the way, just to give a short summary of the Satoshi's place, it's a place that uh, accepts Bitcoin for payments for food and beverages. But on top of it, they have a lot of like things you can uh, do with Bitcoin, like games you can play by paying with bitcoin even the hand dryer i think is powered by a mine yeah <laughs> yeah the, the hand dryer is an s9 uh, so, yeah, yeah it's a great place uh they're, they're launching some co-working there as well um there's a cafe so you can uh, you can get bitcoin themed food uh, it's just a local hub for for everything that's bitcoin uh, they host a monthly kind of news roundup but they're open every weekend, so uh, every every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they're open to the public. Uh, when I was last there, it was great because you get people who are curious, who you know uh-huh. walk past outside and they see the huge Bitcoin logo, yeah. um, and they just come in. Uh, and there's there's always a handful of maxis hanging out inside, uh, and so these these people then start to ask questions about what Bitcoin is, and then, you know, before you know it, they've, they've downloaded a wallet and they've got their first set. So it's a really good onboarding um, mechanism to have that hub there. It's, it's yeah, because, really like, uh, the best way to understand Bitcoin is to use it, in my opinion, as exactly. well. Because otherwise it becomes too technical, too hard, and too confusing, and people are people just hold it for speculative reasons but once you use it and you understand that you can just do payments without anybody's intervention then it becomes something else exactly and not everyone has to understand the fundamentals of the time chain and you know if you want to get into that yourself then then of course do that but mm-hmm. um, most people won't, won't want to do that I mean, most people start with not wanting to do that, but over time you want get to you, hook so, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a mind virus, as they say. So it is for sure. Yeah. So, uh, so you wanted to solve your own solution with uh, for about finding places <laughs> that accept satoshis and. Yeah. So you yeah. Started. So I was headed out to Riga. It was my first conference, actually, um, and it was, it was an amazing conference. Uh, not just because it was my first, but it's quite a small and quite um, a hardcore technical conference as well. So there's lots of good content there for for people who, who want the detail. But yeah, anyway, I was looking for places to spend sats, um, looking online, um, and of course there wasn't a, a, a central place to go look. Uh, there were lots of uh, Google Maps that people's communities have put together, some some really good ones, some really bad ones. Um, and then I came across um, an app um, that wasn't in any of the app stores. It was just on F-Droid um, and not really discoverable uh, called PTC Map. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I understood that it was using OpenStreetMaps as a data source. Um, and in my kind of old fiat life, I did a lot of work with 
uh, open source mapping data. So I was very familiar with the concept. Um, for those that don't know, OpenStreetMap is like uh, Wikipedia for maps. Mm -hmm. So it's open source, um, open commons, creative commons. People can um, create maps and locations on maps or features on maps um, in, in a permissionless way, effectively. Um, so when I saw that, I thought, well, this is quite powerful, actually. Um, there was a lot of data at that point in OpenStreetMaps that had been put, uh, entered in uh, 2014 or so. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a big spike in data then. Uh, so a lot of the data was stale. Um, there was uh, no concept of lightning at all. There was a payment method because yeah. it didn't exist. Legacy payments, on-chain payments. Yeah. So we worked with the OpenStreetMap guys to hash out a, a new tagging protocol effectively for uh, Bitcoin as it looks like today. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we went about um, tagging that data, um, which we're still doing. Uh, we've got 9,000 uh, locations in OpenStreetMaps at the moment. I think about 4,000 of those have been verified. Uh, in the last couple of months, so give us another. I think that today it was around four thousand something. Yeah, yeah. So give another six months, uh, and we'll have verified the entire backlog. Um, and we're also adding uh, locations every day, which are new merchants. Yeah. So um, a pro like an issue is that uh, there's the data there, but like you said, some of the data is not not updated. So. Maybe this business edit themselves in 2014 and it's still there, but the business is not there. So that's a crucial part of. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And it's a different era back then with, with it was on chain only. Um, you know, you can't sit around for 30 minutes waiting for a confirmation. Uh, it's, you know, it's maybe if you're buying a car, that works. But yeah. if, you're buying, if you're buying a cappuccino, no. <laughs> no. Um, so, so yeah, that's the data side. So I, I, I immediately understood the power in uh, community editing, because one of the big problems with the, the sort of private side of stuff, if you've just got a big database of mm -hmm. locations, is how do you maintain that in, in any sort of meaningful way at scale, um, which is difficult to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we... Um, I, I, I created the Twitter account um, and immediately put the shout out for some collaborators. Um, and that's when Second Light got involved, um, who's done a lot of the web dev. Um, and Igor, who was the original Android developer, then kind of stepped up his... Um, of F-Droid app, right? Or... Yeah. yeah. It's not on Play Store now, but um, it's yeah, it was originally on F-Droid. So yeah, just to go back, uh, I was in Riga and I emailed Igor because he wasn't on social media or anything at this point. He just created this, you know, for, for fun for himself almost. Um, and uh, yeah, he pinged me back like within an hour or so. And so okay. I was like, okay, well, let's go. So we, I created the first website in Riga, which was an awful uh, <laughs> one page, you know, using my HTML skills from the mid nineties. Um, yeah, <laughs> the or org org website. The OG page. It's in the, it's in our GitHub just for prosperity. Yeah, um, it's it's horrific. Um, but within a few days, we had uh, other people join. So Second Light yeah. had put a, a better page. We got a a designer involved, uh, Carnage, um, who has done an amazing job on the on the design of the the whole service actually. And so very quickly, we we got a website up and running. We um, got a web app so you can view all of the data on the on the map on the web page. Um, and we launched an iOS app and we updated the Android app. Now we're, we're shipping code, you know, every couple of days. There's, there's some sort of update, some enhancement to the functionality. Never yeah. mind, never mind the data, which is also um, improving on a daily basis. Well, we caught a potential update that you are going to implement on Twitter the other day. Oh, which uh, one was this? Adding the conferences. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we're kind of building things around 
communities um, and meetups as well. So we have the meetup links in there. Uh, but yeah, anything you can put on a map that's related to Bitcoin, then it's on our roadmap somewhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it would be nice to see the conferences. And during the conferences, yeah, I mean, I think the uh, merchants could uh, advertise their services and it would make a lot of sense. So, for example, do, during the Honey Badger conference uh, in Riga, some merchants from Riga could yeah, uh, promote their hmm. service and would bring them good Bitcoiners, actually. so Exactly. And I think um, it's important for conferences to engage with merchants uh, months before uh, mm -hmm. the conference. Um, because in Riga, there was very few places you could spend Bitcoin. Uh, yeah. Even at the event outside, the um, we were tipping um the the vendors at the, the the sort of street food trucks because yeah. Calais and Gigi had set something up for them to use um so we were tipping them but you know they, they weren't accepting bitcoin for payments as such oh, i have a short story from riga in 2019 so there was this uh, a beer vendor there and there was this girl like giving people beer and yeah we were talking to her and we were like okay you need to yeah, like uh, maybe try to get some Bitcoin, we'll tip you too, and you know, we'll teach you. And we taught her, and next day she comes and she's like, oh, I bought Bitcoin. So what happened was <clears throat> she went on to Google, she said, buy Bitcoin, and this Roger Ware's website showed up, and she ended up buying Bitcoin cash. <laughs> The other Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, she's like, oh, look, I have Bitcoin. No, no, this is, you got scammed. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> this is yeah. uh, Bitcoin Cash. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. It was funny, though, so. Uh, well, at least she was, she had you guys around to uh, to correct her way. Yeah, so. yeah it was corrected within the next 15 minutes, but still. Yeah, perfect. Cool. Yeah, so I think having, uh, engaging with merchants ahead of conferences is, is super important. Mm -hmm. um, and... You know, I think it changes the conference experience. Uh, the Bitcoin Amsterdam did a good job of that. I think all of the merchants outside were accepting Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Adopting Bitcoin did something similar as well. Uh, obviously, uh, a bit easier in El Salvador. But um, yeah, no reason why uh, that shouldn't happen. Or at least it sh should try to onboard yeah. merchants. It might not work in year one, but you know, by year two and or three. I mean, if you manage to onboard someone, it would be nice to direct the crowd over there as well. So Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they see that there's demand for Bitcoin payments and they keep working on it. Yeah. And what we're seeing from, from merchants that have adopted Bitcoin um, and are on the map and therefore are visible is mm -hmm. that they're, they're attracting uh, many more customers. And yeah. so Bitcoiners will go out of their way to spend sats. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's uh, the Suffolk uh, Jungle uh, Rooms, which is a cafe uh, in, in Suffolk, a county in the UK. Um, and they started accepting Bitcoin, I think, about nine months or so ago. Um, and they've been blown away. I mean, they, they have people driving hundreds of miles oh, yeah. in, in order to spend some Bitcoin. I know mm -hmm. that place, and there was like this, uh, tag it and we will come. Yeah, what that was that, that Dan Prince, his brother, his brother who owns it. Huh? Uh, so, yeah, and Dan said tag it. Uh, uh, no, Bill, what did he say? Somebody uh, said it. I accept you know. it and they will come. Is yeah, it, yeah. Dan's tag. We modified it to say tag it and they will come. Yeah. I.e., tag it on the map. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. So, um, Nathan, do you want to like uh, take a place on the map? Sure. Yeah. Let's go ahead. Do you want to drive or shall I? You You can do it. I sent you the actually Google Maps directions of a place in our okay. chat. You could use that. Okay. Can't believe you sent me a Google Map link, man. Hmm? It's like a square word for us. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's like me uh, sending, trying to send you Bitcoin cash or something, I guess. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So this place accepts Bitcoin, right? 
Yeah, I started recently. Uh, okay, do you know if they're on the map? No? no, not yet. I saved it for you. Ah, awesome. So, well, if you're a noob, what you can do... Can is... we do screen share? Once you are... huh? Yeah, I'm screen sharing. Can you not see? Oh, no, no, wait, wait. Oh, wait. I need to add to stream. Okay, now we can see it. Perfect. Okay. So here's a place on Google. Hmm. And if you are a, a, a noob, you can go to the website here and just go and contribute and you can add a location. So if, if you don't want to become what we call a shadowy super tagger, you can just enter the data here. Uh -huh. And what happens is that creates a, a ticket for us and then one of the community will then add that into OpenStreetMap for you. Um, but this yeah. uh, shadowy super tagger style. So, yeah, so this is if you want to actually uh, tag it directly in OpenStreetMaps, then we can do that. So if we go to OpenStreetMap, got an account here, so you need to have an account. Mm -hmm. uh, right, let's try and find here. Is this in Izmir? It's right. in Istanbul. In Istanbul. Uh, so let me try and find it in OpenStreetMap. It's much easier with the coordinates, right? Uh, yes, which is why we ask for those. Let me see if I can get the coordinates out here. Yeah, here we go. Huh. Be a bit easier. Uh -huh. See, I showed Google Maps for a reason. Yeah. So, so people... it, was, it was useful. It was useful. Yeah. So I think we're in here somewhere. Uh -huh. Does that feel about right? Uh, let me see. Yeah. So we're on that, so, on so. that corner. Isaac and... Mm. Hmm. Is it? It doesn't then... seem to be the... No, let me try that again. Maybe so, we missed some of the... Yeah. yeah, not quite right. Uh -huh. Okay, here we go. Okay, this looks better. Are you, mm, but no. Are you sure in the same place? Um... So let me just zoom out, try and get some bearings. Yeah. Okay, so. Okay, so we need to go under the diagonal road. Yeah, a couple of blocks down from there. Yeah, I think. So I think we're here. Yes, somewhere. Two blocks down on the corner there. Mm -hmm. So I think we're there. To, to the right, maybe, because there's this uh, building. See? That's like zoom in. Yeah, I see down in there. Yes, that one. OK, we found it. <laughs> yeah. Right, so I can just hit edit. Um, I can add a point, hmm. which I can just drop there. Um, and then I can start to put some of the data in here. So it's a cafe, correct? Cafe. Hmm. So I select the cafe type. Okay. Um, common name. You know, breakfast cafe. Yeah. I'll just capitalize those. Um, I can add some more details around address and everything later. That's fine. But just to make it a bit quicker now, and I can just then add uh, the tags down here. 
<laughs> so um, I say um, currency is XBT, which is the official ISO currency. I say yes. And then do we know what payment? They have lightning. They have lightning, do they? Yeah, they do. So do they take on chain, do you know? Yeah. So I do payment on chain, yes. Payments, uh, lightning, yes. Do you know if they take um, contactless lightning or just QR? Let's uh, not add the contactless yet. I mean, if yeah. they have Ease wallet or something, they could easily take it, but I'm not For sure. sure. So you can see now these have now been tagged in as payment types. Like I said, I can I'll add later some more detailed information, but that's the basics. Um, and then that's it. So if I hit save, um, I would just say uh, initial add based on local page. Uh -huh. um, we have our own hashtag. Um, so we can track uh -huh. what we've done. So that's just BTC. BTC uh, and that's it. We click on upload. Perfect. So that is now in. You can see it's in uh, OpenStreetMaps here. Yeah. Now what will happen, and this can take anywhere between zero and ten minutes, uh, because so we have a... We do have you a scrape the open source maps or...? Yeah, well, we have a, a, an API, so we have a direct um, uh, interface right. into OpenStreetMap. So we are effectively querying that open database for the Bitcoin tags. Uh -huh. um, Is it just them. Bitcoin tags, or are you also checking for the BTC map tag? Or No, just uh, the currency tag is the main yeah. one. There's a few others that we're, we're looking at as well, but mainly the currency one. Uh, the BTC map tag is just uh, so that we can track edits um, mm -hmm. because we're effectively a, a, an organized community from an open street map perspective. Um, and so it just helps us track changes we've done as a community. Uh, okay. But we don't we don't use that for querying. No, the, the XBT is the main uh, yeah, query. Correct, yeah. Uh, and if you go to our website, as we saw before with the contribute ad location, yeah, we have a wiki here as well, which I think is available up here. So you can but just... The documentation you have is really good, actually. But yeah. yeah. So you can figure it out from here. We've got some videos you can take a look at. Uh, but as you saw just then, it's, it's pretty easy. I think it's much better to show how easy it is than yeah, asking people to check it. So I think it was good that we added a place. Also, there's the in the contribute section, um, there's also verify location. So, yeah, so you can do this in the apps, but you can also do it uh, here in the web app. Uh, if you do it in the app and you click on a pin, um, that then pre populates the information here. Mm -hmm. So, that's really to say, is the information up to date? Uh, and then we can um, make sure that the last verified date is updated which means mm -hmm. we've got a view on how current the data is. Um, or if there's any outdated information, you can yeah. put this in. Uh, and then again, that would create a ticket for people in the super tagger community to check. Okay. Um, you can, of course, go directly into OpenStreetMaps uh, and, and change that because it's free and open for anyone to change. But, I mean, if everything is working and you don't change anything, how can you... Uh, let the open street maps know that this is the current status of the place like that it's uh... yeah so you just hit this check box here so is it okay. correct yeah That's if it's right. correct uh, then we will update the last verified date we we probably check as well some of the things online to make sure that um <laughs> it's valid but you know that's that's a good start yeah i'll do some of that uh, before this video airs so places that I can reach out to, hopefully will be uh, actually correct information. Yeah. So you can see here, we've got the top super taggers. So we've got uh, kind of a gamification. Uh, we've got Sonsa here, who's one of the core team. 
who's now created or updated, what's that, 1,101 locations. Um, and so you can take a look at people's profiles. Yeah. They get a bunch of badges here. So look, Saunter's our first whale. Yeah, I was going to say he's probably the first 1,000 plus person there. Yeah, so go ahead and tip Saunter. <laughs> I will. <laughs> yeah, well. I'll just do it now before. Uh, so let's just take a quick look to see if that location's come through yet. No, it hasn't. Um, so yeah, in the next couple of minutes, that's probably going to pop in to the uh, to the feed, and we'll see it here on the main map. Huh. Perfect. Uh, it's it's good to play around these and add the places because holding Bitcoin is good, but. Uh, Unless we start using it, uh, it won't have the mainstream adoption because, uh, yeah, the yeah side exactly. Like yeah. moving around. Yeah, if Bitcoin is money, then we need to use it um, for what money is intended for, which is to exchange goods and services or to help the exchange of goods and services. So we, I we don't personally uh, don't say Bitcoin is money because Bitcoin is Bitcoin, you know, <laughs> it's whatever you need it to be, you know, like you can use it as so many different things. You can, uh, yeah. But it's perfectly usable as money. So this is true. Um, and so, yeah, if we're, we're believers of, of using it and not just, you know, putting it into cold storage and looking at your. UTXOs occasionally. Um, yeah. So so use it. Go spend it. Uh, replace it for sure. <laughs> okay. uh, but 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 go out there, spend it. Find a merchant to to spend some sats at. Um, and it's all part of this circular economy. So let's okay. let's be able to earn Bitcoin and spend Bitcoin. Uh, you know, we... one thing is that I realize that I'm such a tribal person <laughs> in the last couple of years like i want to spend my money on bitcoiners like uh, on the goods of bitcoiners like exactly. if i have to get a service i would rather get it from a bitcoiner so this also helps me in that way uh, if i want to have a lunch i want to have lunch in a place that the owner is friends with bitcoin so yeah and i pay i pay premium to, to spend bitcoin right yeah I mean, even if you pay the same amount, instead of paying with credit card, if you pay with Bitcoin, you are paying a premium to begin with. So, because the yeah, payment mer uh, providers always take a cut off. So, it's yeah. always a premium that goes to the merchants, so, which is yeah. perfect. No, it's great. Uh, and it's really good to see uh, merchants uh, popping up all over the world. Uh, and now with our new uh, communities feature, we should just take a look here. We've now got a community directory um, with all these wonderful communities from all over the world. We are um, there. <laughs> Some, oh yeah, I see. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, it's a shame of a community at the moment with uh, not that many places tagged yet, but. Oh, look at this, one star. I know, we need to verify the places. You need some proof of work here. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, the starring system is, well, currently is not related to how many merchants you have. In the future, we'll change the algorithm to be more weighted towards number. But right now, it's purely based upon how up-to-date mm -hmm. uh, those merchants are. So where, when were they last verified? Yeah, so maybe in the next meetup, you guys can go go verify some of these places and see if they still accept Bitcoin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll yeah. give some of them calls and I'll see what they do. But yeah. I think the, the, the current uh, star mechanism is good because if they are not updated, then what's the point? Yeah, we're focusing on, on data quality, not number of merchants. Um, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. Bitcoin. We are more quality over quantity people. So. For sure. Yeah. So this is a uh, Bitcoin Island in the Philippines. Amazing place. Came out of nowhere uh, in sort of September or so last year. Uh, and they've got 269 locations across the island. I mean, you can you can live on Bitcoin here. Oh, yeah. You, you I... can go to your groceries. You can go pay for scuba diving. 
you know, go grab a burger, whatever you need to do. You already checked the island uh, in detail, I guess. You could find the scuba diver and this. Yeah. And uh, yeah. look at this. Everything's up to date. This is the different taggers uh, that have worked on it. Boom. I want to visit that place during the Parch retreat in... Yeah, I saw that. Um, me too. In fact, we were talking about having uh, a BTC map meetup there because we've never met each other in person. Well, maybe you <laughs> should have a talk uh, at the retreat. Yeah, I, I looked at the dates. I don't think I can make it. I think I've got a clash, but uh, let me double check because that would be cool. Yeah, I'll try. I'll try to go there, but we'll see. Seems interesting. Yeah, so yeah, this is the BTC map project. I see. I just the that one I just approved recently. Rust Surf. Ah, that was you. Yeah, that was. Ah, okay. So you filled out the new form, uh, and then one of our yes. taggers here uh, would have tagged that. So okay. if we go there. That's that's one that that you added today in Istanbul. Um, I we added, added it we had before cool... and today I just updated it. Ah, okay. Yeah. And we have this cool boost feature, so you can go ahead and and boost a location okay. for a certain amount of time if you pay, and and that gives that location more prominence in the search and they get a cool orange icon as well. Um, oh, that's what I was trying to say during like, let's say uh, the Parch retreat uh, conference, it could be really beneficial for the uh, merchants to boost their places on the map because there will be so many Bitcoiners there and you see yeah. Yeah, and I think for those to get extra prominence, uh, okay. so you can look at these are the boosted merchants globally at the moment. Um, so yeah, we're, we're playing around with all sorts of ideas with, with merchant adoption. Uh, we'll be soon introducing merchant pages. So every okay. merchant will have their own page in a kind of Yelp style. Um, and yeah, there's, there's, there's a whole bunch of ideas we have. Um, yeah. We just uh, we just don't have enough time or money to implement them at the moment, so we have There's to go. Such a huge growth potential over this. Yeah, we think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so too. <laughs> Man, I I enjoy seeing it grow real grow real quickly. Yeah. Well, so thanks for introducing the open maps to us, and thanks for working on it. Uh, like you said, sometimes cold emails work really well. <laughs> and Igor, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you've just got to try these things. And um, and yeah, if if we hadn't sent that email um, or if I hadn't have had the initial idea, then it wouldn't exist right now. So yeah, it's, it's been a fun ride so far. We're only, what are we now, five months old, something like this. Um, it's so a baby. It's a baby, and we've we've yeah. come an incredibly long way in a very short amount of time. Yeah, maybe it will be like a Godzilla baby, but <laughs> well, yeah, nice to talk to you again. And yeah, if you have anything, any final words you want to say, by the way? No, really, just thanks for having me. Um, thanks for your support early on. Um, that meant a lot to us when we were new to the uh, community. Uh, and I, I see you throwing sets around on Geyser all the time. So uh, thank you for supporting those those projects. Yeah, tag them. They will come. Build them. They will come. So <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. Good to talk to you. And yeah, thanks for having me, man. Philippines or somewhere. We'll see you soon somewhere. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Ciao. Bye. Nathan ile çektiğimiz BTC Map.org ile olan bölümün sonuna geldik. Eğer siz de Bitcoin'in sadece bir değer saklama aracı değil de ödemelerde de kullanılabilen bir araç olduğunu farkındaysanız bu site sizin hoşunuza gidecektir. Lütfen kendiniz bulduğunuz yerlerde siteye eklemeyi unutmayın. Önümüzdeki bölümlerde görüşmek üzere.